Hey YouTube, Apple IDEF here for the fourth video in our uh, Mac development series. Um, before we start, I want to go over two quick things. The first thing is uh, we're going to take a quick break from the Mac, and I want to talk about iOS here. Uh, for those of you who haven't been following it as closely as I have, um, up until now there has been no available jailbreak for Apple um, devices with an A5 processor, their newest generation. Um, but Twitter user Pod2G, I'll post a link to his Twitter profile in the video description, has worked hard and developed an untethered jailbreak, and tomorrow, um, sometime during the day, uh, this untethered jailbreak will be released to the public, um, meaning that this is the first time that a user can jailbreak an iPhone 4S running iOS 5.1 or later. Uh, the same thing with the second and third generation iPads. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post on in the description also a link to a website that um, has local times for when this uh, jailbreak should be released online, and it'll have all the information on where you can get it and what to expect. Um, so just a heads up for that. The second thing that I wanted to talk about um, was my channel. Thank you guys for being so supportive. In less than 48 hours, it's been about eh, 47 hours and 20 minutes, um, my channel has already gotten more than 50 views, and I already have three followers, which again does not sound impressive, but for 48 hours, I'm pretty proud of that. Um, so, having said that, we're going to move on to actual development. Uh, what this tutorial is going to do is I'm going to show you how to manipulate a window, um, and how to show and hide windows based on actions, and how to set different properties for your windows. So, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up Xcode. And we have to wait for that to load. Mm -hmm. Come on, you can do it. There we go. All right. Sorry, this is running so slowly. I'm running this on a 2008 uh, unibody MacBook. Not a MacBook Pro. This is still one of the... Uh, uh, 2008 unibody MacBooks with, uh, you know, the 2.4 core 2 duo processor, uh, with, I actually upgraded it to 6 gigs of RAM, which is helpful, but, uh, 2.4 gigahertz core 2 duo is not too great when you're trying to play games or, you know, use Xcode. Uh, Xcode uses quite a bit of memory, uh, and quite a bit of processing power. Anyway, enough of me rambling. Um, the first thing that we're going to do in order to manipulate, uh, this secondary panel or... Panel is what we're gonna is what the technical name is. I'm just gonna call it a floating window, or just even a window. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go into your nib file here. And what you're gonna do is right now you see we just have this basic window that uh, Xcode gave us. But what we're gonna do now is we are going to come over here to the left side and we're going to find a second window to put in. Um, I'm going to use actually over here if you see a you see panel here. I'm just gonna use a panel. Um, and, you know, obviously um, the coding is going to change based on which type you use, which is why we're doing a panel, um, because that's the coding that's easiest to understand. Um, and what we're going to do is, actually, for the most part, that's all we need to do. All we need to do now is link it to our code. So we're going to come up here to the Assistant Editor, and we are going to click and drag from the menu bar, or the title bar of the window. You're going to control, click, and drag over to here. Um, and you see the type is NS panel, and we're just uh, actually going to call this window 2. And again, you don't need uh, strong storage for that. So actually, that's all we need to do with our nib files. We're going to go back to the uh, single screen editor, and we're going to go back into our appdelegate.m file. And you see it's now synthesized the property for that window. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to configure some, we need to configure the window when we uh, actually open the application or when we actually run it. So in order to do that, we're going to need to set up uh, three properties. The first two have to do with the panel and the third one is for the main window. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to type, uh, make sure this is here, all right, we're gonna type bracket underscore window two, which is just the uh, instance variable that Xcode created for us. And the first thing we need to do is do set is visible. And we're just going to uh, make that Boolean value yes we're going to do a square bracket, semicolon, hit enter. 
Uh, we're going to do the same thing, bracket underscore window 2. But now we're going to do a set floating panel, and we're going to say no. Uh, floating panel is, we all know those obnoxious windows where it comes up, but it floats on top of every, anything you open up. You can switch applications. Uh, it still stays on top. It's like uh, the uh, audio uh, panel on a Skype call. You can never get rid of that window. That window never moves. Um, it's always on top. You can move it around on the screen, but it never goes to the background. Um, so to avoid that and ensure that our main application window is always the focus, uh, that's why we're setting that property to no. And the last property that we have to set is actually for the main window. Um, and because when we set that window as visible, what's going to happen is it's going to make that window the key window. It's going to make it the active window, and we don't want that to happen. So you're going to type underscore window, and you're just going to say make key window. Uh, you're going to do a bracket and a semicolon, and uh, those three lines of code are what you should uh, be using there. That's all you need. Uh, the next thing you need to do is you need to come down to your button one uh, sender. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to um, change the visibility uh, of it's going to change the visibility of the window. The idea is if you click button one, it will hide the panel, and if you click button two, it'll show it again. So what we're really going to do is it's just one. Uh, it's really one line of code in the button one method and two lines of code in button two. So first in button one, all we're going to do is we're going to say bracket underscore window two, and we're just going to say set is visible to no, and we're going to do a bracket and a semicolon. And that's all we need there. Um, the other two lines of code, we're going to come down to our button2 method, and first we're going to uh, make the window visible with uh, the same set is visible method that we've used a couple of times now. We're just going to set that back to yes. Bracket, semicolon, as usual. And the second thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to, uh, again, make that main window the key window so the focus stays on the main window and that other window will go to the background. So for this, we're going to do the same thing we did up top. We're just going to say window, um, make key window, and we're going to do a bracket and a semicolon to close that off. Um, and I'm just going to make that uh, more readable there. All right, so I'm going to save the code, and um, I'm going to run it just to make sure that we did everything right. And the build worked. That's always a good sign. You can see it's launching, and it says click a button, like usual, just like it did before. But you see now we have this uh, window here, this panel. And you can see if we click a button one, the panel disappears. If we click a button two, you can see the panel appears, but it stays in the background. And that's what that make key window for this main window, that's what that method did. Um, you'll also see that... Um, Xcode very nicely for us automatically handles if this window is closed out. Even if it's closed out, we click button two, and um, I'm oh, sorry, actually, it doesn't do that anymore. And that'll actually be in our next tutorial. I'm going to show you how to um, set restore properties uh, to manipulate OSX Lion's um, restore function, uh, restore functionality rather. So um, actually, I forgot that they. Uh, that with restore uh, meant that it no longer makes like recreates that window. You now have to do it manually because um, because of restore. That window isn't always going to be restored, so it only wants to restore it in certain cases. So it makes you do that manually now. I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but in the next tutorial, which I'll hopefully post later today, later today or tomorrow, it will make significantly more sense. Um, but for now, just don't worry about that X, uh, about that error. Um, but you get the basic idea. Uh, we'll stop that task and run it one more time. Um, just to show you that, again, everything works. You see button 1 makes it disappear. 2 reappears. Um, 1, 2. 1, 2. You get the idea. The tab and space still work like they were supposed to. And they do the same actions that clicking on the button would. So that's all we have for now. I'm going to show you how to uh, recreate that window if the um, how to recreate that window if the user were to exit out and then press button two, so that way it won't generate an error. Um, but for now, please keep watching, subscribe, and uh, Apple iDev. I'll see you guys later.